So you've just updated your old iPhone or iPad to iOS 11, or you have a brand new iPhone 8 or iPhone 10. Well, here's more than 50 new tips and tricks to get the best out of Apple's latest software update. Siri can translate speech into different languages. To translate into a specific language, try this. Translate Video Gadgets Journal into Spanish. Diario de video. To translate into any available language, try this. Translate Video Gadgets Journal. Sure. Translate into which language? Diario de video gadget. Now, at the moment, the language translation is a little limited. For example, say thank you in Portuguese. I can't translate into Portuguese yet, but I can translate into French, German, Italian, Mandarin Chinese, and Spanish. Also, when translating English words, you have to make sure that you go to Settings, then Siri and Search, followed by Language, and it has to be in English United States speech in order to translate. There is a new feature that automatically puts your device into Do Not Disturb mode when driving, as it detects when you are moving. In order to turn this on or off, go to Settings, then the Do Not Disturb options, and towards the bottom, you will have this Do Not Disturb while driving. You can activate it manually or automatically, or when connected to Bluetooth. When you're in Apple Maps and you search for a city, if you press the flyover option, this will zoom into the city and give it a 3D look and it puts it into a kind of virtual reality mode. So you can tilt around the phone and look at the city and scroll about and have a look. So have a play with that and see what happens. Once you're in the flyover mode, if you tap on the screen and then start the city tour, this will give you a kind of bird's eye flyover view and look at different landmarks in a city. For example, I'm currently in the Vancouver flyover mode and it's going to show me Queen Elizabeth Park. So try that on any big city and see what it shows you. It's kind of like a drone flying over the city. Very interesting to watch. Another feature that's been added to maps is the ability to see floor plans of airports. For example, this is at Philadelphia International Airport and as I zoom in, it will highlight the airport buildings so now that I can see different shops and the security checkpoints in the airport. I can also change the floor by tapping on the number here to switch to the first floor or the third floor. So give that a try on certain airports. Apple are adding more every single week so hopefully your local airport or a destination you are heading to will be added as well. You'll also be able to use the same trick with shopping malls. This is the Westfield Valley Fair Mall in San Jose and if I zoom in as you can see it turns into a spotlight map of the mall so check it out and see what you can find. There is a new application on iOS 11 called Files which effectively gives you a portable hard drive on your device. It doesn't however give you any root access to system files on your device but it does allow you to share files from applications onto your files app which you could then share to other people or other iOS devices. As a quick example if I go to iMovies and tap the share button on this project it allows me to save it to files so to take the data from off the application and then use as I please. A one-handed mode has been added to the keyboard to help you with bigger devices such as the iPhone 7 Plus, iPhone 8 Plus and so on. In order to activate it, go to Settings, then scroll down to General, followed by Keyboard. And what you will have here is one-handed keyboard options. There are three options, Off, Left, Right. So if we turn on Right, then bring up the keyboard. As you will see on the iPhone 7, it's slightly adjusted the keys to the right hand side. To turn this off, I can tap on the arrow here. And if I want to quickly turn it back on, I can long press on the globe here. And then that gives me the option to either make it a left-sided keyboard or a right-sided keyboard. Or again, I can turn it off if I want to. When you take a screenshot of your device using the power button and home button at the same time, you get a preview in the bottom left hand corner. If you tap on it, this will quickly open up the image so you can edit it from here. For example, I can crop it if I want to, but you can also do other things such as markup by tapping on any of the stationary options down here and perhaps maybe drawing something or whatever else you wanted to do. And there's also a share button here, so plenty of options to quickly change pictures rather than going into the photo gallery. Screen recording functionality has now been added to iOS 11. In order to activate it, 
go to settings, then the control center, customize controls, VZ your current features on your control center, scroll down until you find a screen recorder as one of the extra options, tap the plus button. So now when I go to the control center, you should see a recording button which looks like this. Tap on it, that will start a countdown, and then when you are on a home screen, you will see a red bar at the top, which indicates that the screen recording has now started. You can go into applications, play games, and it will record your screen. When you finish, you can go to the control center and tap on the recording button to stop the recording. A notification will appear at the top of the screen, and if you tap that, it will take you straight to the photo gallery, where you can watch the screen recording you just made. And you'll see a red bar at the top, which indicates that Within the screen recorder you can change whether you record from the microphone or just internal sounds so it doesn't pick up your voice. In order to change this, bring up the control center, long press or force touch the control center recording option and you'll see here microphone audio, you can toggle that on or off. There are plenty more things to consider with the iOS screen recorder and I cover this in a vast amount of detail on my channel so check out my videos on the Video Gadgets Journal. Now let's have a look at the control center in more detail as it has undergone a massive overhaul. To get to the control center, swipe up from the bottom of the screen. Now any of the options above these four buttons here are fixed on your control center and cannot be changed, but there are many things you can do with them. For example, if you tap on the button, it will simply do an action such as locking your screen orientation but many have multiple functions. For example, on here we have airplay mode and Wi-Fi that you can turn on or off by simply tapping them. But if you long press on this button, it will open up more options. So you get airdrop options and personal hotspot. Similarly with the sliders here, I can adjust the brightness, but also if I long press on it, I get the option here to turn it into night shift mode. So plenty of extra options with many of Vika's control center features. Just play along with them and see what you can find out. Now, now these portion of control center options are fixed to your control center, but anything below it, including these four actions here, are customizable. First of all, we'll look at the ones from the iOS 10 default, which have a torch, for example, you can turn it on or off very quickly, or if you long press on it, you've got different strengths that you can set to the torch to on your camera light. Also with the camera, again, a long press, you will get different options like record video, slow-mo, and so on. And with the timer, you can either tap it to go to the timer application, or you can long press on it to get quick timer options through a slider. So plenty of options there, but it gets even better. What you can do at this point is go to the control center settings, which can be found on the settings screen, going to control center and then customize controls. These are the ones that are currently on your control center, but you can add more just like we did with the screen recorder. So we will add that along with text size. Let's also put in the low power mode and finally we'll put in the alarm. So if we now go to our control center, you will see even more options added. So we can quickly put our phone into a power mode. We can change the font size here. And there are plenty more options in the control center as well. Just go to the settings and add what you like. Furthermore, you can change the priority of these control center actions. So if we wanted to put screen recording to the top, we tap on the three bars on the right and drag it up the list. So now when we go to the control center, as you can see, the screen recorder and alarm are priority control center options below our fixed defaults. When you show the lock screen, but there are no notifications, if you swipe to the left, you will get the camera. If you swipe to the right, you will get your widgets. This is nothing new from iOS 10. However, you can retrieve old notifications. They don't actually get removed when you clear them. On the lock screen, simply swipe up and that will bring up all your notifications from earlier on today. So you can see them like that. If you scroll down, you can get the clock. And now if you want the camera, you'd have to swipe left on the clock to get the camera or get the widgets. Now, if you have music playing while the device is locked, when you bring up the lock screen, you will get music play controls and you can swipe up again to see your notifications from earlier on in the day and they will work together as you can see right here. To get more information on notifications, if you swipe to the right, that will open up the notification application or if you swipe to the left, you get extra options such as being able to view it or clear it if you want to. 
Storage capacity on your device has undergone an overhaul. To get to it, go to settings, scroll down to general and then find iPhone or iPad storage. At the very top now, it will give you a bar graph showing you what different types of storage has been used, whether it be apps, media, photos, and it also now includes recommendations on how you can save storage. You can tap the show all button to give you plenty of recommendations about how to save storage from different aspects of your device. There are a few useful options here, including a quick shortcut to removing the recently deleted album of photos and videos. A new option is also available here as well called Offload Unused Applications. This will automatically delete applications that haven't been used recently, but it does keep all the saved files and documents from them so you don't lose any data. You can also review personal videos here, which always take up a lot of space, of course. And then it shows you the individual storage capacity of different applications. And if you tap on one, you have the option here to offload this singular app. So here we could save 600 meg in the app size, but it would keep the documents and data. So definitely something to work through if you are running low on storage capacity. The volume rockers on your iOS device are defaulted to change your media volume, but you can change this by going to settings, then going to sounds and haptics, and changing this option here, which is change with buttons for ringer and alerts. So now on the home screen, if I adjust the volume, it's changing the ringer volume and not the media volume. Bit of an odd one this, but the auto brightness control has changed location. Previously it was in settings and then display and brightness. Not there anymore. For some reason you have to go to general, then accessibility, then display accommodations and your auto brightness toggle is right there. Instead of talking to Siri, you can type to Siri, but you have to enable this. Go to settings, then scroll down to general, accessibility next and find Siri. And on here you have an option which is type to Siri. Now when you get Siri up and running, you should have a box here where you can type in your search instead of speaking to it. Something to observe now with the home button on the lock screen. If I bring up the lock screen and then place my thumb on the home button but not press the home button, Touch ID will still unlock the device and take me to the home screen. However, if I go to settings, then general, accessibility, scroll down to home button and toggle off, rest finger to open. When I go to my lock screen and place my thumb on the home button but don't press the home button, that would unlock it so that I could see my notifications, but I would have to press the home button to physically get into my device like this. So a slight variation there on how the home button works with Touch ID. The camera can now scan QR codes without the need for an additional application. All you need to do is point your camera to a QR code and you will automatically get a link to Safari for whatever QR code has just been scanned. When editing live photos, you can now choose a new frame for your thumbnail. In order to do this, go to Edit then swipe along the bottom to go through the live photo and when you lift your finger it will say make key photo. So that now becomes your new thumbnail when you're looking at the picture in your photo gallery. Another new editing feature that's been added to live photos is the ability to crop them. Just make sure you have live selected at the top here and you have the crop option down there just like you would crop photos. Another new thing you can do with live photos is add effects. Instead of going into edit, simply swipe up and you will get these effect options here, such as for example putting it into a loop, which turns it effectively into a GIF. So have a look at these new features and see which ones you like for your live photos. The markup feature that you saw in taking the screenshot is also available from the photo gallery. Go to edit, then tap on the three dots and the markup feature is here, which then allows you to make drawing edits to any of your pictures as you wish. One of the quick settings that's definitely worth adding to the control center is the lower power mode. So all you have to do now to set your iOS device into a power saving mode is to tap the button here. Much quicker than doing it through various settings screens and it will save you a lot of battery when you're low on power.
If you want to do a soft reset on your device, hold the power button until you get at the power screen and then press and hold the home button at the bottom. What will happen after a couple of seconds is it will flash back to the home screen and that kind of does a soft reset, clearing cache, clearing applications, a quick way to sort out any problems with your device. There is what you might call an experimental dark mode in iOS 11. To get to it, go to settings, then scroll down to general, accessibility, display accommodations and invert colors. A new smart invert is here. If I toggle it on, you can see that the screen goes dark and it does toggle the button colors correctly. If I go to the home screen, everything looks good there, but then things start to deteriorate when you're in applications and looking at notifications because the colors just don't quite look right, especially on pictures. For example, in Twitter, you can see that a lot of these pictures have gone into some sort of ghost form. Presumably Apple may improve this in the future and it does look like a dark mode but something to test for the time being and not use on a permanent basis. And of course let's not forget with the launch of a new iOS version we have new wallpapers. To access them go to settings, scroll down to wallpaper, then choose new wallpaper. It's the still section that you want to have a look at in particular as these are all the new wallpapers but of course some have been removed as well. So see what you like. We've got the classic version globe there if you want to choose that and set it as either lock screen, home screen or both. Now if you enjoyed this quick guide to some of the new iOS features then make sure to check out my other ultimate gadget guides that include 175 tips on the iPhone 7 and more than 200 tips on the Galaxy S8. If you found this video useful we always appreciate you clicking that like button as well as feedback in the comments below. And if you want more tips, tricks and guides then subscribe to the Video Gadgets Journal. Enjoy the rest of your tech day, bye for now.